<laughs> right on time, too. Oh, good to see you, finally. Good seeing you, too, finally. You can say hello, Junior. Hi, Mo. How are you? Oh, ah. good. How was the trip? Ah, not too hot. Too many people for one bathroom. And they could have chosen a more interesting route. Stand up straight. You got trouble with your back? No. Good, then you can help your Aunt Mo carry your luggage. Okay, look, I've got everything all set up. Mm -hmm. I scrambled some tickets uh, for the zoo, uh, for the ballet, uh -huh. for the Bay Cruise, dinner in Chinatown. Is that what I think it is? Uh, afraid so. Uh, Here we go again. No, look, it's going to be different this time. This is your week, Mo. The hospital's going to come in second. Mm -hmm. Believe me. Yeah, that's what I heard the time before, and the time before that, and the time before that. Well, look, i gotta, I got to make a call. Uh, look, why don't you guys meet me at the hotel, and uh, don't worry about a thing. You're in good hands. Uh-huh. Okay, Junior, pick up your feet. We got things to see, places to be. got to go. You're going to put the lovely back seat there, you want to put it in the trunk. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, you want the trunk or in the best? No, it's right here. Okay. He's not responding. Better piggyback another unit of bullpup. What happened? He was doing okay. Suddenly his pressure dropped out. Multiple bizarre areas he has. I don't know for that. Come on, let's get him here. I had a coat of John. He's got a sinus rhythm, but it's tacky. There's... What is it now? 80 over 60. How much bicarb did he get? The limit. Not here, Jeff. Severe congestive failure. He's still on the butamine. Ernie, we need a portable chest x-ray and get a cardiologist up your stat. Right. John? Well, thank you, Stan. We'll take over from here. Ah, uh, forget it. Just forget it. No way, pal. That's not part of our deal. Now, you just hang in there. I think we're running out of tricks and Jack's running out of time. So who tells him? Tell him what? You don't think he already knows? Dad. Hey, dude. Dude? Listen, I wanted to let you know that Aunt Mo is safe and sound, and I took her to dinner someplace nice. Right. Someplace real nice. Biggest. She upset? Not to. She knows you're saving tomorrow for her. Tomorrow? Oh, no. The zoo, I forgot. I'll take her to the zoo. No, no, not you. It should be somebody with a day off. Oh, no. What? I'm not taking her to the zoo. Well, you get the day off? As if you didn't know. Well, I do now. Oh, come on. Why does anybody have to take her to the zoo? She can go by herself. I don't want her to go by herself. I don't want her to feel like she's in the position. Here are the passes. You'll love it. You'll love it. The zoo. The zoo. Uh, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, I love this window. Hi, guys. Well, those just aren't any guys. Those are reticuli, mostly from the Sambura Reserve. Ooh, I've got a shot of that. Oh, this still got cameras, Jim. Fix this for me. Let me have this camera. Now, here, read that for me. Hi, hi, hi. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. I'm going to get sick. We, we all kind of look this way. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Th this way, guys. No, uh, will you turn toward a little smile, pretty eye? Oh. <laughs> I'll be right there. Oh, not wrong. Wait a minute, hold it, hold it right there. Hold it just, just a minute there. Oh dear, I think I can get a good picture of you. Oh, there we go. Hang on now, hang on. Oh, beautiful. Oh, aren't you lovely? I fixed it, Mo. Mo, where are... Come on, then smile for me. Mo, I don't think you should be up there. Oh, keep your pants on. I'm just taking a closer shot. Relax. Ma'am. Ma'am. This is a restricted area. Will you cool it? I'll be down from here in just a minute. Hold it. Oh, oh, oh. 
Take it easy. You're gonna be okay. I'm. Uh, I know I'm okay. I don't need you to tell me I'm okay. Just lie still. And I'll get you some help. Listen, I can handle this. No, I will. I want an ambulance and Larry, get me a blanket right away. But don't make a federal case out of this. I'm a doctor, so. And so am I. Which is why she's going to get an ambulance and an examination, if you don't mind. I guess I was really beginning to believe that he might be coming home soon. I was just thinking about the time, one of the times, that I tried to get Jack to quit smoking, and he was feeling romantic. And he came over to me, and uh, I said, not just a second, sir. I quit until you quit. <laughs> well, it kind of worked. I mean, out with the cigarettes and um, the cigars. And I lasted about a week. <laughs> anyway, afterwards, we both had a cigarette. It's OK. Oh. He spoke to relax. How could he relax, living that frantic life? 28 years of pressure. Pushing other people's goods, making other people rich. What did he get? He got more pressure, and they got rich. It's okay. Come on, let it out. Is there anything that you can do? I mean, I mean, really? Claire, I've got his name at the top of three donor programs for a possible transplant. But I got a level with you. Finding a suitable heart is a very iffy thing. I mean, we take a lot of time, and time is just something we don't have. So what you're really saying is that there is no hope? I really don't know what to say. Oh, well, we're here. here. What's going on here? Oh, a waste of time. That's what's going on here. It's her arm, Stan. Look, Mo, I just want to make sure I it's not really broken. Why it is not broken. I would know if I Mo. had a broken arm. Mo. Wait a minute. Where are my cameras? You got my cameras? Yes, I've got your cameras. They're in the ambulance. I want her x-ray. Okay. No, no radiation poisoning for me. No, no worries, not me. on no your life. Wait a minute. Where is my purse? You got my purse? I thought you had your purse. I don't have my purse. You got my purse. Oh, great. We must have left it at the city. We! Okay, okay, I'll go back and I'll get it as soon as we're through looking at your arm. You get the purse now. You fix the arm, you get Thank the you. purse. Scram, get out of here. One more brain cell lost, he'd be lonely. All right, where do we go to get this arm fixed? Just Come on, we can't just stand around like this. Keep going to wherever we have to go to get the arm fixed. Do you hear me, sir? That's it. Go home. Trap, trap, wait a second. Hey, what are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be at the zoo. The zoo, yeah, I know, I know. Listen, uh, Aunt Mo took a fall. What? It, it was nothing serious. It's probably just a sprained wrist, but I thought... Uh, she, is she here? Is she all right? Yeah, Stanley's with her right now. She should be fine. She should be out of there in time for dinner. Oh, God. Dinner? Uh, look, do me a favor, will you? Uh, give this to the kid and tell him that I uh, hate to put a crimp in his plans, but he's, he's going to have to take care of his Aunt Mo. Wait a second, where are you going? Houston, Croydon and I are having a long talk. And tell JT I'll call him when I get back. Croydon? Houston, you're talking artificial heart then, right? Yep. An implant on who? Jack Dearborn? If he qualifies. Well, wait a second, Trap. We, an artificial heart transplant? We've never done that before. Well, why do you think I've been making all the trips to Houston? You know, we'd have to do one sooner or later. Besides, I don't see many alternatives. And Dearborn is running out of time.
Excuse me. You again? Yeah. Yeah, I left a purse. It's not my purse, it's Aunt Mo's purse. Well, actually, she's not really my aunt, but, uh... It's in my office, which is out and just down that walkway. Okay. Thanks. It's a nasty little tumor he's got. Very good. Then you are a doctor. Oh, I see you didn't believe me. Yeah, I know. Out and down the walkway. So what's the prognosis? Well, it's been biopsied, malignant, sarcoma, clear through to the bone. I'm afraid I may have to amputate his arm tomorrow. I'm sorry. So am I. Uh, listen, for what it's worth, I did a cervical lymphadenectomy on a guy last week, and uh, I used that new porous adhesive suture. It saved his neck. I mean that literally. Oxyadhesive 40. I know all about it. They tested on the animals first, remember? And as usual, the first always wind up last. I'm not going to see any of that stuff for six months at least. All of you people, doctors, have used up the supply. Well, listen, I could probably. Have you got your purse? No. Well, I have work, so if you'll excuse me. Sure thing. Excuse me. Come on, Linda. Okay. Hold on tight. There you are. Hey. Uh, am I interrupting anything? Nothing much. Well, here it is. What's that? Your purse. Do you really think I carry around a little itty bitty thing like that? Yeah. My purse is. Uh... Isn't that yours? My purse is a cowhide tan with double-strength zippers and a name tag on the outside. All right, I'll go back. I mean, I've got my whole itinerary in there. I'll go I've, back. I've got the keys to the hotel, I've got postcards, I've got my mace, and, and, and the map of the walking tours. I'm going back. I should hope so. Sorry about the inconvenience. I had no keys. I had to wake my landlord up at 3 a.m. to let me in. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Just what were you doing out till 3 a.m.? Looking for my purse. Oh. Well, it's not like I didn't try. I went to the zoo, but it was closed, so... Well, you should have tried a little harder. I was working until midnight. Here you go. Just want to look inside, Francis? No, I... I trust you. Dr. Francis Brennan. That's a nice name. Thank you. I've always liked it. I had to check the IDs. And I had to wade through your keys, the loose change, the toothbrush, the dirty chiclets. On second thought, I think I will. There's a runny Sorry. pen, your address book. Are you from Indiana? Because you get a lot of numbers from Indiana. You know, it's funny how much you can learn about a person by looking at the little things. What's they... this? Oxy adhesive 40. Oh. Grace, where did you get this? Well, people doctors can pull strings, you know. This is going to be such a help. I like the monkey. What can I say? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. You really, I, I owe you a, an apology and a thank you. Thank you, doctor. Gates. Gonzo Gates. Gonzo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I have this little puppet at puppet home, name. and it's called Gonzo. Yeah. So, are you going to uh, do the surgery this afternoon, tonight? No. Oh, good, good. Because I thought maybe we could go out. I mean, since you're not doing anything, maybe dinner and a movie? Just a quiet little evening, just the two of us. Yeah, that's what I had in mind, yeah. Hmm. I should have known that that's what this was all about. Well, no, 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 that, uh, I just, uh... What am I, up for barter here? It was just a friendly gesture. 
Well, you can keep your friendly gesture. The monkey will be just fine without it. She can't be bought. And neither can I. Hey, wait a minute. This is it, huh? That's it. And you want to put this in me? It's better than what you've got. <laughs> no, that's not saying much. You see this, huh? Sure is an ugly thing. The important thing is that it worked, Jack. Yeah, well, it doesn't come with a warranty, but uh, this is an improved version of an artificial heart that's been on a patient down in Houston for the past four months. Peter Grenier, remember I gave you that magazine article about him? Yeah. Four months, huh? Can he walk to the bathroom without ending up with his head between his knees? <laughs> well, he went to his daughter's graduation, saw the Astros beat the Giants, and he's had the run of his own apartment. That? But it has not been smooth sailing. Not by any means. He's back in the hospital right now with complications. And you've got to know what you're in for. And you have to understand about the pain and the danger of stroke, danger of infection, kidney failure. You sound like you don't want to do this, Doc. Look, Jack, I am talking about taking your own heart out and replacing it with something completely mechanical. We were talking about eight feet of power line coming out of your abdomen into a machine, a machine that you can't get away from, whether it's here or hanging on your back. Hey, Doc, look at me. In my mind, being battery-operated is better than being dead. Now, you think so, too. Isn't that why you brought this thing midjig in for me to look at? True. But you've got to understand, I can't offer you any guarantees. Hey, look. I always thought you were a sharp guy. I mean, you kept me alive this long. I'll gamble with you. Right, babe? Mm. Dr. Gates, please report to X-ray. Dr. Gates, to X-ray. One week. I've been here one week, and you throw this at me? No way. There is no way I'm approving that operation. Why not? You know the FDA will approve it. Then let the FDA pick up the tab. Artificial hearts cost money, doctor. Money we don't have. Come on, Catherine. Don't put a price on the patient's head. Don't tell me what to do. I didn't come here to fund experimental surgeries. Experimental? <laughs> Where were you? They've been doing it in Utah, Houston, Humana for the last seven years. Then let them take the patient. Catherine, I don't think I need to remind you that under the FDA guidelines, it is both ethical and proper and somehow affordable for this hospital to use the only device it has when conventional therapy doesn't pan out. Affordable, he says. How? An artificial heart costs thousands of dollars just sitting on a shelf. Now, don't dance around with me on this, Trapper. We are not that kind of a hospital. Oh, fine. Then you go and tell that to the patient, okay? Go ahead, he's in room 410. Tell that to the guy with his life on the line that we can't afford him, that we're not that kind of a hospital. All right, I will. Playing it down and dirty, aren't you? Yeah. Dr. Croydon calling, sir. Croydon? Ah, put him on. Trapper? Herb! <laughs> Glad I caught up with you. Listen, uh, we decided to go ahead with the surgery here. What do you know? How did you ever convince hard hips? Well, it wasn't easy. <laughs> but listen, uh, I'm going to need your help, my friend. I'd like to fly down there and talk it over. Of course you would. Listen, Trap, you can have Pemberton. He's my right-hand man. Been with me every step of the way. The guy's top drawer. Pem why, why Pemberton? Well, it's time to take that vacation I've been talking about. Oh, well, then that patient of yours must be doing really well, huh? Look, I'd like to come down there and maybe talk with him a little bit. Maybe we could arrange it for him to talk to my guy. Um, I'm afraid that won't be possible. He died, Trap. Respiratory failure. Oh, no. Where's that father of yours, Junior? I don't see him anywhere. He's supposed to meet us here. He's probably on his way. Oh, well, I hope so, because, you know, dinner dinner reservations are just in an hour. Yeah, well, listen, are you uh, feeling okay? Because maybe we could stop for a bit and have some oysters. I saw a nice little shop down here. I think they had some saltwater taffy and some popcorn, too, and I just love popcorn. A little saltwater taffy and popcorn, that'll fix you up real good. Oh. 
Oh, good, you're here. Why are you here? That's the question. Well, to barter, why else? I mean, don't I look like a bartering kind of guy, huh? Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, you forgot this. You'll need this. Actually, the monkey will need this, and we should be thinking about him right now, shouldn't we? I've got uh, retractors and pickups, sponges. Take a look at this. Are you through? No, I'm not through. This is an IV pump. Do you know how hard it is to keep these babies off the books? Just how much is this going to cost me? Mm -hmm. Nothing. You are in my way here. I don't have the time for you or for any of this. I think you should make time. You do? Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, you and all you other self-centered jerks think that you can just waltz right into somebody's life and sweep them off their feet, oh, that's right? that's nice. That's very sweet. Just toss me in with all the jerks, okay? Okay, look, obviously you have been burned. I'm hey, sorry. Hey, stop that. You don't know that. You don't know anything about me. Oh, but you know all about me, right? I know that I don't need your dime store analysis, and I might add, I don't need your come on. So, if you'll excuse me. Why don't you just lighten up for a beat here, okay? Why I mean, just give me half a chance. Just leave. No. I am telling you that I want you to pack this stuff up and get out of here. Well, am I crazy? Wasn't there some kind of chemistry here? Something between us? You must have a vivid imagination. This and you, out. What the hell is wrong with you? Why does anything have to be wrong with me? The way I see it, I am peaceably working around here, and you won't leave me alone. Oh, leave you alone yes. with your birds and your animals. That's all you need, right? Mm -hmm. To hell with the human race, is that it? To hell with guys, because they're all the same, even the ones that have feelings. Animals don't play with your feelings. They don't lie to you, and they don't leave you. Hmm? It wasn't me. It won't be me. Believe me. I can't take any more of Aunt Mo. I can't. Where's she now? Back at the hotel, finally. That's okay. I talked to her. I told her I'd try to get some more time. I heard about the patient in Houston. So is the board. What about Jack Dearborn? Did he hear? Yep. And he still wants to go through with it? Oh, yeah. What about you? I've offered hope to a man without hope. I can't renege on him now. Great. So you're going to do it now when I help? you got enough to do. Oh, come on. Dad, I can do more. You need a point man to coordinate the team. The equipment, the data, monitor the patient. Just stick to your rounds in regular medicine. Uh, but... <sighs> all right. I just thought it'd be a good chance for us to work a little closer together, that's all. Crap, I have met this girl, and I'm telling you, I'm crazy about her. Yeah, well, I hope she's understanding, because you're not going to be seeing her for a while. We've got a lot of work to do. Welcome to the team. No kidding. Here, read this. If I'm going to have a point, man. I want him to be informed. Welcome to the team. Come on, let's go. Mm
Hey, little guy. Oh, he's looking good. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I could save his arm. So, are we still on? Yeah, looks like I can spring loose this afternoon. Good, because I already made plans, as in 4 o'clock, the lighthouse by the Yacht Club. You will be there. I'd be there with bills on my twos. Well, I would prefer black tie. It's formal. Formal? You're kidding. You're not kidding. Black tie. Four o'clock, no problem. You do own a tux. Of course I own a tux. Four o'clock, I'll be there. cost me 50 bucks. <laughs> well, it was worth every penny because you look gorgeous. Gorgeous. Come on. Uh, hop on, come on. 50 bucks. I thought you said you owned a ducks anyway. Well, I lied. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Here, just lean into it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, you sure you know how to drive this thing? No. Okay, I'm pedaling. I'm going to hang out now. <laughs> when you add the picnic that I've got planned for you, Whoa. very much really just sort of uh, holidays Christmas Father's Day and then after the divorce every other Sunday and even that just dwindled off how old were you about six what was your mother like just like me so if you want to bail out now no way you peddling yep oh it feels like just me peddling oh. Here, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. Ah. <laughs> mm. 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 That's good. Yes, it's good. Yeah. In that, that case. Oh, okay, sure, sure. Mmm, it's very good. I think there's a little more up here. Boy, you bring us more business. I want to see all this. He's fine, seriously. All right, we'll take care of this. Dr. McIntyre wants to see you stat. Why? What's up? Ask him. 
I can't leave her. Yes, you can. Go. Kate, I think you can trust me to take care of my own department. Mm -hmm. He'll take care of her. I'll wear my white gloves. Okay. I'll see you in a little while. Don't worry. You've been having vision problems, haven't you? Come on, miss. We're here to help you. What's been going on? Nothing's been going on. I, I uh, got tired and I lost my balance. All this worry is about nothing. Okay. I just want to take a look at something. You feel that? Sure. So if, if you'll just take this silly thing off my head and let me up. No, let's just try the other leg, huh? Okay? There. Sure. You felt that? Of course. All right, just play this way, please, will you? Thank you very much. Stand aside. Bring him out here. That's good. Yeah, just, uh, just a minute, Kate. Just a second. Okay, the press center will be the conference room at the end of the hall. Thank Stand you. now. Yeah, yes, what? Yes. Francis Brennan, an SMA panel, an ultrasound, a CAT scan, a CBC. Why all these tests? What's going on? I'm just being cautious, Gates. What do you care? They came back negative. So why'd you run them? What were you looking for? You must have had something in mind. I know she was a friend of yours, okay? It's not good enough. Gates, I was just being thorough. Damn it, Stan, I want the truth. What's going on? All right. She showed signs of ascending paralysis and double vision. The CAT scan ruled out a concussion, so I just went a little further. Okay with you? Yeah. What kind of paralysis? It's all right there in the report. But I'm sure she's going to be fine. Yeah. Thanks. Lovely. Well, you shouldn't have. Enjoy them. They're yours for about an hour. As soon as Mrs. Dunn gets back from surgery, they're hers. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you shouldn't have. Yeah, well, you may be right. The word is, you are seeing another guy. Who? Me. You seeing two of me? Dr. Riverside told you. Yeah, don't beat him up. He means well. How come you never told me about this blurred vision of yours? I don't have to tell you everything. And the numbing out? It hasn't happened that often. I'm just nervous. Strained. That's all. How long has it been going on? I don't know. I don't keep a diary. Dear diary, today I was numb. Hey. Hey, yourself. You're not dealing with a civilian here, doctor. I know enough to know what's going on. What did the lab say? Let's see. Blood tests. Show an elevated white count. Small drop in your potassium. Did you know that a giraffe can gallop up to 30 miles per hour? Gosh, no, I didn't. Did you know I've never been to Africa? I'm probably the only vet working in a city zoo who's never been to Africa. Well, I could probably fix that. After I get you well. Now, come on, let's do this. You work with animals all day. A lot of them are sick, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe you picked up a bug and it's crawling through your nervous system. That's a possibility. I think I would rather that you were crawling through my nervous system. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. So do you keep files on your sick animals? Oh, please. 
Well, let's take a look at them. I want to see what kind of viruses you've been exposed to. You're not going to give up, are you? On you? Never. All this for me? But of course. You're a celebrity. Or didn't you know? We have even made plans to redecorate the place. After all, this is going to be your home for a while. Home. Yeah. Well, let's see how it goes before you start messing with that. Okay. If he bugs you, just buzz me. <laughs> now, look, Jack. If you're getting stage fright on me, I think we ought to go through the lines once more. And that way you'll get a clear picture of what's ahead, and um, I'll get a rehearsal. Hey, you're the boss, Doc. Okay. Jack, you're looking at about seven hours on the operating table. We'll open your midline incision, and then the aorta, pulmonary artery, and atria. After that, we'll run bypass tubes to keep your blood circulating. Then... We remove your heart, and then we start stitching Dacron cuffs to make way for the artificial heart. Easy. Nothing to it. Once we get the other heart in, you'll be on this pneumatic heart drive and monitor. There'll be two lines coming out of the artificial ventricle through the abdominal wall about here. Oh, brother. Now, I hope to wean you off of this one eventually and over to one of these. Second thoughts? Just one question. You sure you paid your electric bill? <laughs> if you ever give me another spinal tap, we're through. No more spinals. Any answers yet? We're closing in. Good, because you've already used up half of my sick leave and my vacation. Oh, wonderful. A convention. How nice. <laughs> Is it that serious, Doc? Relax. I'm working the interns rounds today. You're our first stop. Okay, you with the charge start. Yeah. A uh, patient came away from her bike accident with minor injuries. Uh, nothing broken, just abrasions and a mild concussion. But she's still experiencing blurred vision and motor impairment in the left? Right. Right side. Diagnosis? Anybody? Come on, don't be shy. She's a doctor, too. Well, everything checks out, but she's still got the symptoms and fatigue, so maybe we're looking at something degenerative. Maybe we should examine the patient's history. Ms. Brennan is the head veterinarian at our city's zoo. She works with a wide variety of exotic animals, particularly when they've taken sick. What are you saying? She caught something? An infection? I'm asking you. What? what? Meningitis? No, that would have shown up in the spinal. And something viral or parasitic probably would have shown up in the blood. Let's not generalize. Uh, Gans, uh, Dr. Gates, uh, we, we, we still don't see any specific symptoms that would suggest infection. We still say it's degenerative. And I say you're speculating. Did anyone consider encephalitis? No, why not? Because that would have been indicated in the spinal fluid, wouldn't it? Wait, why don't we just schedule an NMR? No, that's not the way to go. What I want to know is if anyone bothered to look at the animal health records that I brought back from the zoo. No, all right, next patient. We play rough. Only when it counts. Just who the hell gave you the right to order an NMR on my patient? You're losing your objectivity, Doctor. Says who? Your own interns. They drew a bead on Fran's diagnosis. You want to debate me or face the facts? What facts? This doesn't tell me anything. Why do you keep denying her symptoms? I'm not de Okay. 
The NMR shows nerve inflammation. That doesn't mean... Doctor, there are multiple plaques in the brain and evidence of demyelinization. Now, why don't you do both yourselves a favor by facing up to it? I don't know what you're talking about. The lady has multiple sclerosis. You're wrong. Look, I know it stinks. I'm telling you, you're wrong. She doesn't have MS. And I'll prove it. I've had to run every single test over and over again. I will prove it. That takes time. I'll make time. No. Somebody else will make the time. Now, you have major league surgery coming up, remember? I can do both. No, you can't. I'm telling you, I can handle it. No, I won't take the chance. Don't sweat it. I'll, I'll get somebody else. Thank you.